Have you ever wondered how to catch and halter a weanling that's never been handled before? Well, stick around because Seth and I are going to show you a technique that works pretty well for us. Okay, folks, this is a last call to streak. This is a 2021 Bay Colt, and he is freshly weaned off his mama. He's been weaned for a few weeks now. And this is Seth Carey. If you missed the first video introducing Seth and this Colt, I will link it in the description box below with the finished product of this Colt. But it was important to me that I show you guys how we got to that point. This is the very first halter breaking session, and this is also a very different experience for Seth. He's accustomed to halter breaking in a box stall, like a 12 by 12 or a 20 by 20 box stall. Now this pen is approximately 80 foot long by 40 foot wide. And so Seth has set up a panel in the corner as a wing to help get this colt penned up in the corner. And he spends a little bit of time, you know, kind of herding him around. There's two other colts in this pen. These are also weanlings that have been put in here as buddies for this little bay colt to kind of, you know, have some friends in here and, you know, everybody gets weaned together. So they all kind of share the same experience and they're occupied by each other and not, they don't, they don't get bored. Now, Seth is going to kind of use these other two that are already pretty gentle. They've already been handled to help get this little bay colt back into that corner, into that wing behind that panel. So again, it was super important to me that I showed you guys this entire experience because I wanted you, you to see that we all make do with the resources we have provided. We all have to be creative and intuitive to what's going to work for our specific setup and our surroundings. And in this case, this colt's kind of out wide in the open and you kind of would scratch your head and go, how am I ever going to get him caught? And in this case, Seth had put this panel up, made a little wing out of it, and he got two colts in there, and because the filly is already pretty gentle, he's able to kind of get her out of the pen and and separate the two of them. And it, it's kind of precarious situation here. You want to you don't want to go in hard and fast because if this colt really had a lot of flight to him, he would certainly try to jump out of this pen. Okay, that that has been known to happen. And so he's kind of using the opportunity to squeeze them together, you know, push the other one out and also start putting his hands on the little bay. And then he can stop him, hold him in there and kind of squeeze him in a little bit tighter and hold him in, in the spot. And then he can start working on getting that halter on him. Now, I will tell you that it's not like this colt has never seen a person. He's been raised up in a corral about this size with his mom, and his mom was very, very gentle. So I could go in, and I could groom on her, and I can fly spray her and put ointment on her fly sores and whatnot. So he was kind of always around when I did that kind of stuff. I was able to hit him with a little bit of fly spray here and there. So it wasn't like he's completely feral, lived out in the wild, okay? He's had a little bit of human interaction. When he was a week old, I did quite a little bit of handling him twice a day every time I fed his mom. And I do have video of that footage, so I will link that in the description box as well. And Seth just kind of waits here patiently for this colt to stop moving. And, you know, that's what I really appreciate what Seth is doing here. He's very, very focused, and he has a ton of patience. And that's the number one thing that you have to come at these colts with is just waiting. And I will tell you guys that I videoed this entire session, and the video was 45 minutes long from, from start to finish, from from him catching him like this to him releasing him and taking the halter off the very first time, okay? And it was a 45-minute video, and I've managed to edit it down quite a bit. It's still a lot, but it takes that level of patience and that level of focus to work with a horse, you know, just work with horses, period, but also to do this halter-breaking session. So if you don't have that kind of time, you don't have that kind of patience, you don't have that kind of focus, you know, this just isn't for you. I'm really excited to show you the results that Seth gets when he takes the time that it takes to teach a young one. Now, I will tell you that this colt is speed bred, both top and bottom. He's by my gray stud, Why Not Firewater, who is by Firewater Flit. 
And on the bottom side, he is out of a mare called LVS6 by Streaking 6. So when you have that much speed breeding, you're going to have a more reactive individual, okay? And that's quite a bit different from the Hancock Blue Valentine Blue Valentine type horses that Seth is accustomed to working with. And so this is a brand new experience for him as well. So Seth does a lot of rubbing and petting on this colt while he has him in this position. You know, clearly the colt hasn't entirely accepted his situation yet. He's got two friends that are loose in the pen that he'd probably rather be with. He's fighting flies a little bit because we still had flies out this time of year when we weaned him. And he's just kind of waiting for the colt to accept Seth's presence, okay? This is his very first experience with Seth. I probably could have done an entire video just on catching one and putting a halter on the first time and what that experience is like. So all of this experience is this colt's firsts. So we've talked about it in previous videos how a horse is capable of learning something the very first time. If they don't learn it the very first time, they get eaten in the wild, right? And Seth is trying to make this a good experience, but we're also starting to see how this colt reacts when he's put under pressure. This is a high pressure situation for him. And we see he kind of made a bad choice there, stuck his head through the rail. If Seth would have put more pressure on him, he, he, we could have, you know, got the colt in the jam and could have got him hurt and could have got a really huge reaction if he would have reacted when he had his neck and head through that panel like he did. Seth used that opportunity there to, once the colt turned around a bit, he used that opportunity to kind of squeeze that panel in a little bit tighter. He's touching the colt a little bit more up on his chest and neck. He has the halter right there. He's rubbing it along his, along his neck. He's letting him sniff it. All of these good experiences, he's not putting a lot of pressure on him at this point. He's just kind of taking his time, continuing to remain focused. You know, this is one of those things that you take the time it takes to teach. You don't do this when you go, oh, I got a half an hour and then I have an appointment. This is something that takes quite a bit of time. Your very first experience handling a, a weanling like this. So Seth gives this colt quite a bit of time to accept his circumstances here. He's in no hurry. He's in no rush to get this halter and lead rope on him. Again, this very first haltering is going to set the stage for every haltering on this colt for the rest of his life. And if you take that into consideration, you would take quite a little time yourself. And he takes his time going around his neck. And he also kind of keeps his head out of the way there because this kit, this colt could come back and smack him in the face a little bit, um, even through that panel there. And he's very aware of that as he tries to get this halter on. Obviously, this is not the best situation here. Um, you know, obviously, you'd like to have the colt with his head on the other side so you could tie that halter a little bit easier. But Seth is big enough, tall enough, has a long enough reach with his arms that he can get it tied. Uh, for reference, Seth is just about six foot, 175 pounds, and um, you know this comes a little bit easier to him. Uh, he's also 24 years old, so you know his back can kind of take a pulling, and he can kind of take a beating, and he has some height to him, so he has a little bit more leverage than say some of us who are only five foot three and 120 pounds like myself. So this is really kind of fun watching him do this and see how he goes through it and how he approaches it. One thing that Seth had never taken into consideration before he came working with me is that he has quite a, an advantage to these weanlings because of his size. Okay, so we're getting the halter on here. These other colts decide to come over and see what's going on. We kind of have to shush them away and get them out of the video. We're getting it on. The colts accepting Seth, handling him around his head. Gets it tied tight, and we are also realizing here that the halter that we picked out to put on him the first time is actually too big, and we're going to see that come back to haunt us here during the rest of this session. It's not a terrible deal, but you do want to get a halter that fits properly. We accidentally grabbed the large weanling halter, and we should have grabbed the small weanling halter, and it, you know, it is what it is at this point. Um, so now we've got him caught. What do you do next? You guys will have to stay tuned for the second part of the first session. Thanks for watching and have a great day.